The Longines Spirit Zulu Time is one of the nicest travelers GMT watches under 4,000 US dollars. However, recently Longines released a traveler's GMT version of their popular Hydro Conquest sports watches. For those of us considering these watches, which should we select? I just can't decide which one. I'll provide you with all the information and insight you need to make a decision on this episode of Adventures with Time. Last year, when I reviewed most of the Traveler's GMT watches under $4,000, I selected the Longines Spirit 42mm Zulu Time as my top pick. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Since then, Longines has come out with a 39mm version of the Zulu Time, and to the point of this video, a Traveler's GMT version of the Hydro Conquest line. There's some interesting and important differences between these two GMT lines, which I'll point out, so you will have all the information you need to make a selection. Let me start out with the specifications of these watches. I include in this comparison both sizes of the Spirit Zulu Time watches for completeness. The Hydro Conquest at 41 millimeters falls between the diameter of the two Zulu Time models. It has a longer lug to lug, smaller thickness, and greater weight. It should be noted that the Zulu Time bracelet has a fixed center end link, effectively increasing the lug to lug. As for weight, I could not discern any difference between the Hydro Conquest and the larger Zulu Time model. Yet the Hydro Conquest did look a bit more massive on my 7 and 7 8 inch wrist. Several factors could produce this larger appearance, including the crown guards, larger font of the bezel, and fatter lugs. I do suggest you compare these on your wrist, taking into account your preferences. If you like experimenting with different straps on your watches, the 21mm lug width on the Hydro Conquest and the 39mm model of the Zulu Time may be a concern. The 42mm Zulu Time has a more common 22mm lug width. Another, probably minor consideration for most of us, is the greater water resistance that comes with the Hydro Conquest. 300 meters versus 100 meters of the Zulu Time models, which in my view is the minimum for taking a watch into the water. The movements in these watches are essentially the same. The L844.4 in the Zulu Time models is COS chronometer certified, while the newer L844.5, or just L844 as Longines terms it, is not. I suspect by not having these movements cost certified, they reduce their costs and hopefully pass that on to us. I'll talk about price later. Now let's consider design features of these watches. As mentioned before, the Hydro Conquest has a slightly bulkier look to it, at least in my view. It has a more rounded contour, especially in the shape of the lugs, while the Zulu Time has a polished chamfer which adds to its slimmer appearance. One of the greatest effects on the aesthetics of these models is the crown guards on the Hydro Conquest. This gives it a bulkier and more toolish look. Also to consider is the white trim date wheel on the Hydro Conquest versus the understated dark opening on the Zulu Time. This date feature is more subtle on the Zulu Time, giving the watch a more elegant look. More subjective differences are the designs of the hour indices and hands between these two watches. The Zulu Time watches have loom-filled Arabic numerals and obelisk hour and minute hands. The Hydro Conquest obtains a different look with its mostly rectangular hour indices and diamond-tipped hour hand, similar to the Tudor Snowflake hand. I find these differences play a big part in the aesthetics of these two watches. A design aspect that is both functional and aesthetic is the bezel type. The Hydro Conquest uses a diver's timing bezel, putting the 24-hour GMT scale on the inner rehaut. This makes sense given the Hydro Conquest is a line of sports watches. The Zulu Time has a 24-hour GMT scale on the rotating bezel, so you get greater functionality with the Hydro Conquest, both a GMT hand and a timing bezel. By the way, both watches have ceramic bezel inserts, meaning there probably won't be anywhere like on aluminum bezels. The other aspect of greater functionality concerns the bracelet clasps on these watches. The Zulu Time has a smaller folding clasp that includes five micro-adjustment positions using a spring bar. 
The Hydro Conquest has a longer class that incorporates an on-the-fly micro-adjustment mechanisms. Something I love to have in bracelets. Perhaps offsetting this is the quick release bracelet removal mechanism on the Zulu Time, while the Hydro Conquest requires the use of a spring bar tool. Personally, I find the micro adjustment capability more important. Now let's review pricing. The Spirit Zulu Time models retail for $3,150, somewhat higher if you want the two tone models, which one should consider, as I'll explain later. The Hydro Conquest is $375 less expensive at $2,775 US dollars. So how should you evaluate these different watches? First, one needs to consider the various size specifications of each model. The Spirit Zulu Time offers two options to fit your wrist. Those with smaller wrists may find that the larger Zulu Time and the 41mm Hydro Conquest is too large. However, if you can wear a 41mm watch, I think you'll find the 42mm Zulu Time will also be a viable option for you, at which point you'll need to consider the other attributes of these watches. Looking at value proposition, it's hard for me to argue that a $375 difference on a roughly $3,000 watch should be a factor in one's decision. Yes, it's about $400. However, if I'm considering a $3,000 watch, $400 more or less isn't going to sway my decision that much. What about you? Instead, I would consider the aspects of each watch that I objectively think are better, or at least more appropriate for me. I already mentioned price. The Hydro Conquest comes with a greater water resistance. The Zulu Time watches use a cost chronometer certified movement. Although remember that the Hydro Conquest has essentially the same movement, just not submitted for certification. With the Hydro Conquest, you get a bracelet that has an on the fly micro adjustment mechanism in the clasp, while the Zulu Time bracelet has a quick release feature. And with the Hydro Conquest putting the GMT track on the Rehot, you also can use the bezel for timing. Are any of these features critical to your decision? For me, the micro adjust capability on the Hydro Conquest is something worthy of consideration, as is having a timing bezel in addition to a GMT functionality. While these may be important to some, I think the overriding decision criteria is the design approach of each. I find the Spirit Zulu Time has a more refined, or can I say elegant or dressy appearance. But this is not a value judgment, just an insight for you to consider. And the Arabic hour numerals with their subtle diamond accents cut into the raised minute track gives a softer appearance to the dial, more so with the two-tone model. Even though some of the Hydro Conquest models are also available with guild features, they still give off a toolish look, partially stemming from the bulkier case with crown guards, more substantial handset, and larger font on the bezel. You need to decide which of these looks you prefer and which meets your wearing goals, and weigh that analysis with the aspects of the value proposition enumerated before. No matter which of the insights I provided you find helpful, you still need to try these watches on your wrist. I'm going around to multiple ADs to try the different models on my wrist to find what suits me. If the diver's watch aspects of the Hydro Conquest are more to your liking, take a look at this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.